In between the pages of a book, I awaken to a more subtle version of myself, where the only thing that truly matters is my mind and my heart. The two get lost in a sea of words, and I find myself floating on my back in cool waters of serenity. In between the pages, I make new friends called writers. They sometimes make me laugh or maybe cry, but I always learn something in the end, and we love our secret life together. I'm so proud to be able to express myself fully with you. And every time I close the book, we are both left wondering when we'll meet again. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to be here with you. My name is Maya, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. I'd love to have you in the community. Today's video is a very, very special video. I'm coming at you with a book review video or a book roundup from the last few months, the books I've been reading. I'm sitting in my backyard just as an excuse to g gather some extra vitamin D for the day. I love it when the sun moves through over the backyard. I just find myself out here for any reason just to enjoy the sun. So that's where we're at today. It's really warm out. Woo! My last book video was for 2020, like the books, my favorite books out of the year 2020. And I had aimed to do more monthly book review videos, but I just was not reading them quickly enough or I was forgetting. I think it was a combination between those two reasons and I just wanted it to come more naturally so I feel like I have finished a nice amount of books seven books with one honorable mention here's the stack let's get into it the first book that I'm just pulling off off the top of the pile with no particular order although I will say I've I don't really read much fiction. I really want to start though. So if you have any fiction recommendations, book recommendations for me, please leave them down below. But I have a lot of like self-help and poetry books. So if you're interested in those type of categories, then I think you'll be interested in these books. The first book that I have here is a poetry book by Nikita Gill. It's called Wild Embers. And it's a relatively small book, really thin, about 150 pages. And it's poetry, so you can really get through this pretty quickly and read it multiple times pretty easily. So, yeah, I like her poetry style. It's very symbolic. She works with a lot of archetypes in our culture and different cultures and history. So I really like that, but it's obviously... I can, I don't know if they're white, but I can just feel that they're a white woman. So it's very much like white women feminism poetry. So if you're interested in that, then I recommend this book. Um, it's called Poems of Rebellion, Fire, and Beauty. So it's all about like releasing women's inner wild self and rebellious self and how that's reclaiming what's beautiful to us as individuals and not and stepping away from what society tell <coughs> tells us we should be excuse me um so like she works with a lot of like fairy tale archetypes and um goddess archetypes okay i'll just read uh, this poem that came out to me here it's called wolf and woman some days i am both woman and wolf and I'm still learning how to apologize for my wild. I just realized there's some construction going on outside. Okay, I hope that's not too annoying for you. And the next poem is called Anger. The anger is like a demon trying to escape into your spirit. It claws at your insides, a darkness that relishes the pain it will cause. If you keep it in the pit of your stomach, if you hold it inside your ribcage too long, it will take your tongue prisoner when you least suspect it and terrorize everyone you love. This fiend, this cruel thing, it can be defeated. It is not own you. It deserves no space inside your spirit. Instead, channel it. Find a way to let it out. Cry, dance, sing, build, create. Do everything you can to give it a way out. 
take everything that tries to destroy you, curse you, and turn it into something beautiful by incantation. Okay. I'll read one more. It's called Learned Helplessness. They call it learned helplessness, finally a phrase after years of study to explain why we stay in hopelessness with men who leave our faces bloody, why we let the cruel fists of a man determine to turn our bodies into a purple storm that began with ending and ended with fingers that disembody our self-respect, our courage in that moment. We forget we are somebody. There is a hierarchy to this his chaos that one learns to simply accept there is a beginning to his madness that one knows will eventually end so like those caged animals they outlawed in cir circuses you let the ringmaster be tyrannical even as your soul winch winces years from now they will ask you why didn't you leave him because you will say quietly he had convinced me i was no longer human so just women reclaiming their sense of identity the sense of inner power and inner beauty i really recommend this if you're a feminist um or you're interested in feminism at all to go along with that motif is this book untamed by glennon doyle and this is kind of fiction but really it's not it's actually not actually at all it's self-biography i feel like but it's her telling the story of her life and how she like found herself so it makes me feel like it's sort of fictionized in certain areas just because it is someone's real life that they're gathering the the storyline from um like they keep the names the same of, of everyone in their real life in and the details the same but i just got a sense that it was sort of embellished at, at times so okay if you don't know this is a book it's a really incredible book i've heard lots of people talk about it basically it's all about how this woman glennon doyle went from being like a member a high member in like the christian white community and as a woman and as a mother as a wife and she was like a writer and stuff but then she i guess turned out found out that she was actually gay and her and her husband got divorced and at the same time she met her soulmate which is some like famous soccer player or something just this is a book about how she dismantled the archetype of being like a good christian wife woman in her head for being just her true self and reclaiming her power her inner sense of power so i think she went through addiction like addiction to alcohol and to love and stuff and all and also i think uh, maybe an eating disorder so she had her fair share of mental ailments and through releasing her like inner burdens that and try through um from making herself something into something she wasn't something that she thought society wanted her to be i think she was able to dismantle some of those mental disorders that she was dealing with so that's really nice and stuff I just felt like this was very much for white women. Um, it's a New York Times bestseller. Uh, it's really great and, and she's a very good writer. I just felt like the ease in which that she was able to transition from being like one person to a whole nother identity, so to speak, her true self, which is still good. It's, it's, it's something that I don't really identify myself with just because I'm not ever that, I, you know, growing up, I didn't feel like I was ever the ideal state that uh, an attractive woman sh should be in the eyes of society, you know? I'm short, I'm black, I'm very loud and artistic and weird and different, so I didn't feel like I necessarily fit in, so therefore I didn't have any chains or any expectations put upon me that I felt like I had to, I had to uphold. So that itself, I think, is a white issue and black women have their own expectations that they're expected to uphold but i just i just always felt like i was beyond that mainly because i grew up in white spaces it's a really great book i i really recommend it if you're white and again if you're feminist okay let's talk about another one it is called codependent no more and this is a very great book i talked about it in my last codependent video so if you missed it i'll link it down below so you can check it out 
and it says how to stop controlling others and start caring for yourself and so I love that I love I love that this book is all about just not focusing so much on other people and in reclaiming your own inner power again if you're sensing a, a theme here i'm very much into reclaiming my inner power and because i know that we all have just infinite amount of power so if we are able to reclaim it there's nothing we can't do so it's called cold and pendant no more and it's by melody Beatty. if i didn't say that already and there's just a lot of of really great things that i found was really helpful of dealing with codependence and unraveling that. So as I said in my codependent video, this book deals a lot about alcoholics and AA people from AA in that world. So it does deal with becoming codependent in terms of the 12 step program and in through, in through the stages of grief too, like uh, denial, anger, bargaining, you know, depression and then acceptance so it's it's very it's very empowering this book i very much recommend that if you feel like you deal with codependent tendencies at all which i felt like i did i i see myself healing so much from it now i don't really feel like it's effect it affects me anymore but it used to on a daily basis so it talks about how to be angry how to develop your sense of connection to you and your feelings and how to detach away from other people and um, communicate with other people your needs and eventually how to restore relationships in a healthy way so i really enjoy that if, if you like um, you are codependent or you know someone's codependent check this out even if you even if someone someone's not codependent on a person but a substance this book also talks about that a lot so I very much enjoyed it this next book is called the untethered soul by Michael Singer and this was a very great book um, Deepak Chopra recommends it so I think that's a very great um, sign again a New York Times bestseller so it says the journey beyond yourself and that is essentially what this book is it's a huge ego death it's one big ego death in 180 pages so it talks about how letting go of your sense of identity letting go of your habits of trauma and um, regression and re and repression just recreating a cycle of harm on oneself how to get out of that and it's just really beautiful. I do shadow work sessions on my Patreon every other weekend. And I've been quoting this book quite a lot. So if you're interested in shadow work, I think this book is very much helpful for that since it's all about discovering your sense of timeless self away from death so i think our ego is very connected to the fact that we're going to die one day so it's all about survival and how to move past survival so we can thrive that's what this book is all about i'll try to find a part that i liked it's just talking about right here how when we feel pain and we connect to it and we hold tension to pain and we try to run away from it, we're actually um, exacerbating it by not allowing the energy to move through our bodies. We're actually keeping it held, thus uh, replicating the energy within our body over and over again. So it's very um, simple language, but the way that they're describing these techniques to transcend the ego is very, very profound, I think. I really recommend it if you're into spirituality at all. I didn't feel like I learned any really, really new information, but I really did enjoy the, the language that they put these concepts to. I found that it was simple in language and it, and it encapsulates a lot of beautiful knowledge in very simple terms. So I really enjoyed that. On the back it says, who are you really? What would it be like to to be free from limitations and soar beyond your boundaries. What can you do each day to find this kind of inner peace and freedom? The Untethered Soul offers a simple, profoundly intuitive answer to these questions. What if this is your first exploration of inner space or you've devoted your life to the inner journey? This book will transform your relationship with yourself and the world around you. The Untethered Soul begins by walking you through your relationship with your thoughts and emotions. 
helping you uncover the source of fluctuations of your inner energy. Mm. It then delves into what you can do to free yourself from your habitual thoughts, emotions, and energy patterns that limit your consciousness. Finally, with perfect clarity, this book opens the door to a life lived in the freedom of your innermost being. Wow. Next book is by Julia Cameron. It's called The Artist's Way, the world famous The Artist's Way book. Um, when I was reading this, I felt like I was getting so many synchronicities of people telling me to read this, telling me they were reading it, telling me they had read it, referencing it. Just everyone around me I thought was referencing this book. And I thought that was really interesting because this book asks you to keep track of your synchronicities. So let me back up. If you don't know what this book is, it's essentially a guide to any any person that's a blocked artist to recover their sense of true artistry and rebalance their creative life their creative journey so it's meant to be a self-help book for writers painters poets actors musicians and creative people in all walks of life so I think that's really beautiful because I think everyone's an artist and I really hope one day our society can live like that by seeing everyone as an artistic person and hoping that everyone can create something unique in the world and they can be paid for that. That's, that's my utopia life dream situation. So, but yeah, I really love this book because it has sections that you can fill it this your fill out answers to so it's very interactive and yeah they're making sure you're checking in by writing there's certain rules that you're doing for the whole like 30 days or however long it takes you to finish this book it's supposed to be in a certain period amount of time so it's kind of like you're in like a class or something in a book so i really like that um this person julia cameron i guess is an artist i think they're a writer i mean obviously they're a writer yes they're a writer and i believe they did like screenplays and stuff but part of their job was just going around holding inner artist workshop classes for people to take so they can unleash their inner creative self. So she essentially translated her class into a book. So that's what this is all about. And here you have to, or you don't have to, it's recommended that you do artist dates. You take yourself out on artist dates, preferably by yourself, where you're un undisturbed and you can just do some a creative project with yourself for no other reason to, than just to create. I love doing that. And um, you also have your morning pages. So that's where you write in your journal, free write, and every morning to just stay connected to your inner child, your inner self, and your shadows, which is all pretty much the same thing if you think about it. So this is very, very cool. I enjoyed this book a lot. I felt like it definitely reconnected me to my artist, my sense of purpose as an artist and how to be fearless as an artist and take risks and chances. Since reading this book, I have taken up a new skill, pottery, and I don't know anything about pottery and, and a part of me would just like avoid it and not try, but I am trying and I have been having a lot of fun and I feel like that is accredited to uh, the tone of this book and reading this book I'm able to come out of my head a little bit and give myself some grounding as an artist so I love that if you're interested in reading this book it's a classic I recommend it if you are identify as an artist in any way I only have two more books to show you and one more auto honorable mention so this book is called Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza. So Joe Dispenza, if you don't know, wrote You Are the Placebo, which is a very scientific spiritual book. So what I mean by that, it's Dr. Joe Dispenza was a neurologist, like a brain scientist. A, I want to even say psychologist too. He was just a very big person in the medical field and they had a near-death experience and they healed themselves through their thoughts. So ever since then they just went around collecting data and researching all about how the human mind is so strong it can create anything and and in creating a, and they cre helped create a practice that helped anyone create the life that they want. So 
that's a big feat to say but it's true they seem to really be doing a lot of great work again they are a white man so that it is under that perspective that they are writing from and, and, and creating from so that's something to consider um, but nonetheless I felt like you are the placebo it's very dense and scientific in nature so if you're into stuff like that like spirituality but it feels like too woo woo sometimes you want a bit more grounded to earth I definitely recommend reading you are the placebo it's very scientific but also very telling of how all of these people who went through severe medical traumas and situations were able to heal themselves through their thoughts or not it's a great testament book if you are feeling hopeless or you don't feel like your faith is intact i highly recommend this book so i love that book so much i was very excited to read this one and it's all about i guess it's a more hands-on approach and more direct writing sense of writing for how one person can you know essentially become a god and create whatever they want um, be whoever they want at any moment through the power of the brain so it has a lot of diagrams and a lot of scientific charts as you can see and it's it's rather thick it's rather dense um, it has a lot of pictures that you're able to it feels like a real textbook at times like you are the placebo did but at the same time i feel like i'm really able to see their personality especially towards the beginning and really see like how god or the universe whatever you want to call it is channeling through this person into their work i really feel like that just from their sense of mystery the way that they describe certain supernatural elements that it comes with being a conscious person it makes me feel like they really have a grasp on it it was quite shamanic i guess in nature their 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 language it was quite beautiful so i feel like you know and you are the placebo i didn't really i just got that they were a doctor and they knew about the science community really well so i didn't really get the spiritual energy from them but from this book i really get the spiritual energy i'm not done with it i'm almost halfway done it's a quite big book like I said but I want to really enjoy it I don't want to like rush through it just to do that so I feel like I really want to take my time with this and there's just a lot of great in scientific information if you are a person that really enjoys understanding from a scientific point of view of how consciousness works how spirituality works get this book it's really incredible something profound that I found is how we can essentially time travel from attuning our vibration to a certain frequency that matches some a higher reality if we can match that vibration we can go to that higher reality and time travel in through space um into something different and and i love that you know it's saying that we're all connected again it's from the eyes of a white man so I say that to say like the um, story in from this book that pops into my head is him telling his son like okay his son wanted to quit his job so he told his son oh, okay you can go on vacation to Thailand and Indonesia and all through there and uh, to surf and his son did that for a year or two he ran out of money Joe Dispenda said hey I can still pay for you son while you figure it out but while you're there, my only request while I pay for you to surf and relax is to manifest your dream job when you come back. Because the son didn't know what he wanted to do. So he just spent all his time doing manifestation work, like visualization of what he wanted to do and seeing how he was manifesting the dream job, even if he didn't know what it was specifically he wanted to do. And nonetheless, he created it seamlessly when he was able to come back to his home. He was able to get a dream job, making surfboards, I think, and he had no experience, but people allowed him to come into the field. And he was able to thrive there and have his own company or something. So I only need to say that to say, that's that story to say that, yes, it was very easy, maybe because he was able to manifest, because he was on vacation at, for, for a year and were really able to like manifest what he wanted to do. And he had the time and space to work on a hobby that was connected to his dream job. So that's a lot of privilege there. And obviously that's connected to being a white male. So I think that's important to consider.
because I do I do hear the the side of saying oh well, all these white people are saying you can manifest so easily just take the time and do to do, do and they're right unfortunately it just reaffirms this like sense of privilege that they have because they had the time and space to do that and I think we all ha should have that ability and that freedom but not a lot of us take advantage of it because we're just so busy trying to survive so I think more and more people like me should be saying the same message and I think it'll land a lot easier for a lot of people in the world. So I love this book. I really want to absorb the information so that I can be a new spokesperson for this type of information of how we can change our life through our brains and through our spirit. Because essentially I believe this is our information. This information is black information, is is ancient information. So people like us should be spreading it. So I'm very excited and grateful for people like Joe Spencer to get me on my pedestal so that I can speak up to the people who look like me in the future. So Yay. The last book I have to mention to you is by Jan Spiller, another white woman, and it's called Astrology for the Soul. And I think someone wrote North Node on here, or maybe North Node is a part of it. Nope, it just says North Node, and it's called Astrology for the Soul. So I really like that someone wrote North Node right there, because it really is what this book is all about. If you're into astrology, you know what a North Node is. If you're not, I'll briefly explain a North Node is essentially the the everyone has north node and south node your north node sign means the energy you want to create while you're alive on in this lifetime the lessons that you will attract and the energies you want to lean more towards is your north node and the opposite sign to your north node is always your south node so your south node is like the the energies that you had a lot in your past lives that you know very well and you lean towards naturally is your south node energy but you want to balance it out by leaning more towards your north end energy in this lifetime and you will attract lessons that is of north node so certain depending on who you ask certain astrologers will say that north node is just as important as your sun or moon sign depending on who you ask so I feel like if you ask Jen Spiller, they would say that because it's they call this book Astrology for the Soul, but it's literally all about North Nodes. So they talk about what the North Node is for the first, like, you know, 30 pages. And then the rest of the book, which is, this is a pretty dense book. It's about 300, 400 pages. So it's pretty dense. And the rest of the pages are just going into depth, in-depth detail about each sign as a North Node and the relationship to the south note that that sign has so i was able to really learn a lot about myself each section of north node breaking down is about 30 pages or more so there's a lot of sections that go along to it so my north node is in libra so my south node is in aries the thing about north nodes is that if you're born in the same time period most likely you'll have the the same north node because it goes from year to year um it changes so every person i've ever dated have had the same north node in libra slash most of my friends have north node in libra just because we're all born in the same time span i also learned about houses from this book so wherever your north node is also depends on where your chart where in the house which house is it in because in that point of your life those lessons in your north node will be intensified so for me my north node is libra and it's in my 11th house which is the house of friendship and connection and relationships so i thought that was very interesting i think north nodes is an essential part of natal astrology so this is a very 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 good book i highly recommend and my last honorable mention i'm losing the light so I'll wrap it up my last mention is called steal like an artist by austin clinton and this is a great coffee table book it's a really little book that just has a lot of little like graphics art in there little statements little lessons of how to be an ethical artist as we adopt from other artists and we create so the secret to prop the stage it's just really cute 
I love reading it and just randomly picking open or opening up a part and reading it. Number one is steal like an artist. Number two, don't wait until you know who you are to get started. Number three, write the book you want to read. Number four, use your hands. Number five, side projects and hobbies are important. Number six, the secret. Do good work and share it with people. Number seven, geography is no longer our master. Number eight, be nice. The world is a small town. Number nine, be boring. It's the only way to get work done. And number 10, creativity is subtraction. So these are very interesting rules. I definitely haven't read this book cover to cover so I don't want to really speak on it before I read it so that's why it's an honorable mention but I just it's a really fun read and it's very like laid back non-serious and again it's another way to unlock yourself as an artist that's the end of the books I want to share with you today but I do like I said before I do want to read more fiction books so if you have any recommendations please leave them below and I really want to keep reading a lot more than I have been I definitely have been reading for leisure more so than you know like I have to I have to which has been nice but I do want to change it up especially if I'm reading fiction because it's a little bit more interesting and fun to read so I'm excited to read more fiction books and I can't wait to come at you with another book review I love doing these I love talking about books I hope you enjoyed and leave me recommendations you have or if you've read any of these books and you want to let me know how you felt please leave them down below and I'll see you in the next video it will probably be a camping something or another video which I'm very excited for all right have a good weekend friends bye